Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is the assembly video for the Electronic Talking Safe Kit Combination Lock with internal EEPROM. Uh, it talks to you, it also has a relay output with uh, common, normally closed and normally open pins. Uh, thick relay traces, high power relay. So I'm going to show you today how to put it one together. Here is the kit. Uh, we'll open it up in a second. This is how you should receive it uh, unless I make a change. We also sell these fully assembled in our uh, eBay store and soon to be uh, engineeringshock.com so check us out. Uh, and anyway, so uh, let's take this apart. I'll introduce you to the components. Okay, so you've got custom PCB, 7805 5.0 regulator, 3 pins, uh, 2 10k ohm resistors, 8 470 ohm resistors, a 160 ohm resistor, a speaker, uh, 0.25 watt, 8 ohms, a 3 pin terminal block, 2 pin terminal block, 7 segment display, common anode, uh, a 5 volt relay, program microcontroller, uh, programmed audio controller, uh, 2 sockets, 1 16 pin, 1 18 pin, a 2 pin header, a momentary push switch, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, a diode and two ceramic 0.1 microfarad electro, uh, ceramic capacitors. So first of all, let's do our resistors and our capacitors. I forgot to mention the large potentiometer here, and while it is a resistor, we're going to save that for last. So I'm going to put this aside for now. So two ceramic capacitors, no polarization. Uh, they can be placed in the C2 slot, labeled 0.1U C2, and uh, in the C3 slot right here to the left of the 7 segment slot labeled 0.1U C3. Again, both leads are the same size, they're ceramic, there's no polar polarity, so place them in either way. The 1 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor goes in the C5 slot labeled 1U C5, so 1 microfarad C5. Uh, you'll notice that there is a plus sign on the rightmost lead very, very small, you probably, not, can't, probably can't see it from here, but if you purchase the kit you'll see a plus sign on the right and a minus symbol on the left. Uh, the electrolytic capacitors have a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Place the long lead, the positive lead on the right uh, with the side with the plus sign and the short lead on the left with the, with the uh, negative symbol. symbol. Uh, same goes for C1. Now say C1 is labeled 100 micro, 100 U C1. It's actually 10 U, 10 micro. Um, and this is because the capacitor, I made a little bit of a mistake putting the uh, uh, I made the footprint too small and it obstructs the regulator so uh, I brought it down to 10 and it works just fine, no problems. 10 microfarads. There is a plus sign closest to the 7805 footprint and a negative sign uh, closest to the lower left hand side of the board from this perspective. Long lead on the upper pin close to the regulator, short lead closest to the bottom left of the, uh, of the board from this perspective. If you, if you turn those around, if you turn uh, the uh, C1 around, it'll blow up when you pat when you power it up. So make sure that you don't do that. Uh, and, and if you place uh, C5 backwards, the audio chip will not work correctly. So be careful. Anyway, off to the resistors. The um, 160 ohm resistor goes in the R2 slot right here, labeled R2 168K. Should be 168K, but 160K works exactly the same. Um, the four or eight 470 ohm resistors are placed here R10, R11, R7, R8, R9, R4, R5, R6. Uh, those are all 470 ohm resistors and they're actually labeled 470R. So make sure that you place them there. There's no polarity of the resistors, so you can place them in either way as long as the right values get plugged into the right places. And the two uh, 10k ohm resistors go in this, these two slots right here, side by side, labeled R310k and R110k. Solder those all into place. Make sure for the capacitors that you have the right polarity. Uh, and once you're done that, we will do the transistor, the diode, and the button, the header, and the terminal blocks. Okay, the diode. On the diode, it might be difficult to see from here with the glare, there's a white side of the diode, uh, or rather, there's a white loop around one side of the diode, that's the negative, the cathode, and the black side is the positive, the anode. The diode is placed right here, labeled D1, uh, 1 and 4, 0, 0, 4. Uh, the white, there's a white stripe on the bottom pin, and that white stripe 
should uh, line up with the white stripe on the diode from a bird's eye view. If you turn that around, when your relay is activated, you'll get a short circuit and the device will reset. So you make sure that, that from a bird's eye view, the white line of the diode lines up with the white stripe on the bottom lead from this perspective on the footprint. The two terminal blocks, uh, the two pin and three pin, there is a terminal side and there's a plastic side. Uh, the terminal blocks go here and here. Make sure that when you solder them in, you give a healthy amount of solder and that the terminals are facing outside the board and not inside the board. Otherwise, you'll have trouble wiring your power supply and your relay switch, whatever you're switching with your relay. The transistor goes in the slot here labeled T1, 2N, 2N, 2, 2, 2, sorry, T1, 2N, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And there is a curved side on the left of the footprint. Might be difficult to see from there, but there's a curved side and there's a flat side on the footprint. On the transistor, there's a side with writing on it that's flat. As you can see, it's lying on its curved side right now, going back and forth. The curves from a bird's eye view, the flat side of the transistor should face the flat side of the footprint, and the curved side of the transistor should face the curved side of the footprint. If when you solder it into place, you turn it around, uh, your relay will not activate when it is supposed to. The button, the momentary push switch, goes in the cell slot right here. It really only fits in one way. Line up the, uh, the leads in the holes and pop it into place. Make sure it's flush to the board when you solder it in. The speaker um, header goes in right here. There's a two-pin slot called SPK. Now, just solder that into place with the long leads facing the top of the board, and then we can just plug our, our uh, speaker directly in. So solder those into place, taking special care with the uh, diode and the transistor. And next, we will do the two sockets uh, and, the, uh, and the ICs, our regulator, and our uh, eight seg seven segment display. Okay, seven segment display. Lower right hand side, there is a dot. On the lower right hand corner of the footprint, from this perspective, there's a dot that's half hidden by one of the leads. Uh, make sure that from a bird's eye view, that dot lines up with the dot on the board like so place it through make sure it's flush the board when you solder it in now there's two sockets here and here uh, the 16 the eight, uh, 16 pin socket is on the top 18 on the bottom um, the there is a notch on the left side of each socket a notch and there's left side a left no a notch on the left side of each of the ICs so when you're soldering the uh, sockets into place, you have to make sure that you line the notches up with the notch on the board. From this perspective, there is a notch in the footprint for both of the chips. So make sure that your notches from this perspective face left when soldered into the board, like so. And then when you have those soldered into place, making absolutely sure that there's no shorts, that you place your ICs in with the notches facing the left. If you turn, those are for reference, uh, if you turn it around, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up uh, frying your chips. You're going to completely fry your chips. So make sure you, you pay close attention to that. Solder those into place. We will do next our regulator and our relay. And from after that, we'll do our final step, which is our uh, variable resistor, our, our, our dial. The relay has three pins on one side, two on the other. Pops into place only one way right here. Make sure it's flush to the board, healthy amount of solder on the five leads. The uh, 7805 goes in right here. There is a white stripe along the back of the board, and that simulates the back of the 7805. So make sure that the back of the 7805 sorry, is facing the outside of the board, and that the black side, with the writing on it, is facing inside the board. Solder, solder them, those, both of those components in, and lastly we will do our uh, the variable resistor. Then we'll do a quick test. Because of the light, it'll be difficult to see the footprints on the board, but there are three pads right here labeled GND for ground, ADC for analog to digital converter, and VCC, which is 5 volts, supply voltage. There are three pins in the potentiometer. This is a shared set of pins another shared set of pins, and then right at the e edge of the potentiometer there is another p single pin. The rightmost pin from this perspective, keeping them in mind that the uh, knob is on the right, the rightmost set of pins solder a wire. Uh, the kit doesn't come with wires, use your own wire, uh, between this set of pins and ground. Then solder another wire to the, set, this, the middle set of pins, and uh, 
that will go to VCC on the left. Lastly, the wiper. The wiper is the, the lonely little pin on the left. So out of that pin to ADC. And you can, the wires can be long, they can be short. If you're going to be really, really, really long, make sure that the wire is kind of thick. 22 gauge or more. But, you know, if you're within a foot, it doesn't really matter. Uh, even the smallest gauge will work. So solder that in, and we'll do a demonstration. Okay, so it's dark now, so you can see the seven segment display. Uh, the terminal block has two pins labeled V plus and ground. V plus is on the left, ground is on the right. I'm adding uh, 7 to 12 volts DC to power it. So I power it up for the first time. Does it work? Enter yes, it does. So what we need to do is we need to program in a code because we don't know what our code is. So this is a mandatory step. Turn your potentiometer all the way to the right. It should say 9. And power it down. Hold down the cell button. So now we enter in a four digit combination. So let's do 9988. Set. 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 Code System ready. Enter combination. So let's try 9988 again. If you see the display flickering, it means you're right on the brink of the voltage threshold. So don't worry about it, just make sure that it's on a steady number and it's not flickering. Because this is based on the voltage coming off the wiper of the potentiometer, so... System activated. System activated. So, that's our combination. This uh, 7 sigma display will flicker like that until, and the relay has turned on until we press the cell button. So I'm going to turn the, turn the power off. Our code is 9988, and it's the only code that will deactivate the system. So let's try it again, just on power up, to show you that the EEPROM is working. Enter combination. Set. 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 System activated. System deactivated. Enter combination. So let's try entering the wrong combination. So it is saying set, meaning it's taken that number into memory. So it's a neat little kit. Four mounting holes can mount easily to uh, can mount easily to any project box or even a wall if you wish. Uh, the relay is high power. The traces are very thick, and so you can power uh, AC devices. I wouldn't go powering your dryer or your uh, microwave with it, but you can power lamps and high-powered sirens, and even maybe a bass amp. But I don't know why you would use a bass amp. I uh, just say base amp because I'm looking at my base amp. Anyway, so that is the uh, Talking Safe Kit with internal EEPROM. Uh, very easy to use. I have another demonstration video, and I'll be linking both to the listing at engineeringshot.com and electroniclessons.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.